people in getting it out. Got one! Look at that, right off the bat. Oh, uh, They love this pattern. Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie one of my carp flies. It's the beadhead squirrel tail. And it was the very first uh, fly I used to catch a carp. Um, I was out fishing uh, with a fly box that had all sorts of different flies in them. And I was going for smallmouth bass and I saw some mudding carp. And so I thought, well, I'll give this one a try. I tied it on. Bang. Like right off the bat. Carp on and away I went. And that started me chasing carp. And I used this, this fly a lot until I went through all the squirrel tails in my uh, uh, fly box. And I have not got around to tying more because my crayfish pattern has done so well. I never went back to this pattern. But I'm going to tie some and uh, get out using them for carp, kind of like the good old days sort of thing. And uh, so let's get tying. Oh, before I do... I gotta tell you, I've got a little bit of a new setup here. For those of you who like cameras and video, uh, over my head I've got um, uh, Micro Nikkor uh, 105. In front of me I've got um, Olympus uh, Zuiko um, 80 millimeter bellows lens attached to the auto tube. It's going to give me some exceptional close-up capability that I have not had before. So uh, when I start tying flies uh, going into the fall, when you get into my fall series, you're going to see some exceptional detail that I couldn't get before with the other cameras. I'm also looking to pick up a 200 uh, micro Nikkor so I can get really close uh, for the small patterns. So let's get into it and look at the materials we're going to do for this fly. Better put on my goggles so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to use a size 6 streamer hook. This fly sort of imitates a uh, Hexagenia lumbata nymph. They're burrowing nymphs. So it'd be typical of what a carp would kick up when they're mudding. I've got a, a 1 8 copper bead on here. I'll leave the bead choice to you. It depends on your current strength. If you're in a river, how deep you have to fish. Uh, so use brass, you know, copper, or even tungsten if you have to, if you really have to get down. Um, for me, uh, a 1 8 copper is more than enough. I'm going to use a dark brown uh, 6 aught uni thread. My wire is going to be a soft gold. The tail is going to be a red squirrel. I'm going to use hare's ear for the dubbing. I'm going to have a turkey quill for the wing case. And I've got these rubber legs that I'm going to put on. If you're going to tie a carp, rubber legs, rubber legs, rubber legs. Okay, let's get started. Bring your thread about half way on the shank. So halfway between bead and the start of the gape. Okay, now to put in our wire. I use nail clippers for cutting wire most of the time. Don't use your good scissors. Okay, I'm going to put the wire underneath. Put a couple of turns to hold it in place. Now I'm going to use squirrel tail, but I'm going to put it on top of the hook. It has a lot of underfur, so get rid of it. Now we're going to stack it. Now, I probably got a little bit too much here, so I'm going to take some out. That's better. You don't want this tail to be a little too overbearing. Do a pinch loop and then wind down, keeping a wire underneath and tail on top. Some nice tight turns in there. Just make sure the tail doesn't slide around. Now trim that off. Okay, now we're ready to dub. Now, a lot of people don't use dubbing wax, but as I've said in other videos, I have dry fingers. So I find that I, 
my dubbing doesn't always stick to the thread because of that, so we're going to use a little bit of dubbing wax. We're going to aim to put a little bit of a taper in here. And don't worry about all the bits sticking up. In the hex pattern, there is uh, gills along the side. So if you've got a really fluffy looking dubbing, really buggy looking dubbing, that actually works in our favor. All that fluffiness in the, uh, that bugginess in the uh, dubbing does the job of imitating those gills. Okay, now we're going to put on our wire and I'm going to counterwind, so I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Bring the wire underneath doesn't go anywhere. Now we're going to use our uh, turkey quill to produce a, a wing case. Now there's a dull side and a shiny side, so I'm going to tie this in dull side up, and you'll see why in a second. Now when I flip that over, it'll be shiny side up. Now we're going to put a little bit of dubbing in here, and then we're going to go put in our rubber legs. And this is going to be the thorax, so you can go a little heavier in here. Uh, it gives us a little bit more bulk. A little bit more. Okay, now we're going to tie in our rubber legs. I've cut off one bit already. Loose wraps to hold them in place at first. Don't pull them too tight because they will move around. Now on the other side. Same idea. Don't get your Wraps too tight. If it's moved a little bit. Now, here's the secret to some durability a little bit of CA glue. And here's the tricky bit we've got to wrap the dubbing in amongst the legs. Now we're going to come in front of the legs. And if it moves, just put it back. And just pull those out of the way and just come in front. Okay. Now when you are trimming your rubber legs, I always make sure they're shorter than the gape of the hook. Otherwise what happens is they will foul on the hook gape. So and if you find they're, you, they look a little long, take a bit off. Whatever you do, don't have really long rubber legs. They get fouled up in hook gape and then they don't work. Now we fold our wing case over, pull up, and let's put a couple of turns in there to make sure it's held in place. Trim off.
Now we come in and whip finish, making sure you don't trap a rubber leg while you're doing it. Okay, there's our bead head rubber leg. All set to go. Uh, you'll notice the rubber legs are rather exaggerated, and that's fine. Carp seem to love them. Don't ask me why, but they do. So there's the basic pattern. Uh, the way you fish this is you look for a mudding carp, and you cast, if you're in a river situation, you cast ahead of the carp and beyond the carp. So the current brings the fly towards the carp as well as you strip it slowly. You want to bring it into, into the mud plume. And then as it leaves the mud plume, the carp thinks that it's stirred up an insect which is trying to flee and it will turn and take it. And um, with my crayfish pattern, I've had them chase as much as 10 feet to get the fly. It's, it's quite an impressive thing to do. You're stripping slowly, moving that crayfish pattern and you're just watching this carp, this huge carp just come right after it. And you're, 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 uh, you get the shakes. It, it's great, it's lovely. So anyway, there's the uh, bead head squirrel tail nymph i don't see why you can't use this for trout as well but it's really a carp fly so give it a try it certainly does work cheers got him got out here oh i bet you broke me off yeah you did